So they basically looked at it and said, okay, Lucy Hale, this script, we think it's this much money we can make off of it. So this is what we'll offer it to you. And so even then they don't give you the money to go make it. You then have to still find someone else to usually finance that, that contract, basically. It's almost like collateral you use to kind of then go make it. If we took your pitch, how much was about the idea of the film and how much was about the return on investment? I think it's probably a 50-50 kind of pitch in terms of the creative side and the financial side. I mean, obviously it depends on who you're pitching. Um, when it's an actor or something like that, it's all about the character and all about the story. When it's an investor, it's much more on the financial side. But hopefully the people you're working with do care about making a good movie, and that was the case in, in my case. Um, but ultimately, making movies is a business, and unless you can finance it yourself, um, you have to kind of work within that system. And um, I felt confident, though, that this film could be financially successful because it wasn't some sort of quiet indie drama. It was a really compelling um kind of commercial film, but with a lot more to it, you know? So if you look at the trailers that the distributors made, it's it's a very commercial version of the movie. It's actually, it's almost, um, it's, a, it's a lot more depth than in the film when you, when you actually watch it, but they are able to market it like a broader kind of commercial action movie, you know? And that's gonna bring people in. And when they watch it, they're gonna hopefully be pleasantly surprised that there's actually so much more to it. It's, it's not so much that, it, it really is a much deeper complex film. And so, but I knew that that's how you could do it and that would that would be a model that would work. And so, um, we also, the movie is not a, a very expensive movie I and mean, we, we, we made it for as little as budget as possible and we put a lot into it and uh, we were able to make a really great looking film um, on a, a pretty small indie budget still. And so I think it's in a place now where because of all that, I think it will hopefully make its money back and be successful and... Um, you know, I think it's, it's 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 an interesting size film that I think we could be doing more of these kind of um, couple million dollar films where um, you know it it has uh, this blending of, of genres and worlds where there's there is some risk still because um, you're trying to tell maybe a more deeper story, but um, it's not just the t it. I think we, could, we Hollywood needs to take a little bit more risk, but there could also be some calculated risks like this, you know, which is. Uh, not everything has to be some sort of sequel or remake or whatever. Like there is, there are sizes of films that still make sense where it's it still could make its money back. It still has a, a good shot at being a very successful film, um, but it's still telling a new, fresh, original story with uh, a unique cast, you know, and, and a maybe really almost first time director. So um, I hope it's it'll be a. I hope if it's successful, it'll prove and show that um, they can be taking more chances on people like me. How much do investors care about movie ideas? Movie ideas. I mean, I think if it's a good investor, they, they care about the idea and the, the concept. Um, certain investors don't care at all and they just want to see who's in it and what the genre is and, you know, what the, the, the dollars and all that stuff is. You know, what is the tax incentive and all that kind of things. And unfortunately, that's how a lot of movies get made. But that's also why we end up with a lot of not so good movies, too. So. I think the best case is when you kind of think of it from both sides. You you obviously need to understand this is a business. It has to make money and have a shot at that. But you still have to make a compelling good movie. Otherwise, what's the point? Because we're only doing this to, to entertain people and make good stories. So um, I was lucky to have investors that wanted to make a good film. Um, and so hopefully, you know, that's where people want to kind of go towards when you're when you're trying to make your film. I definitely met with people who didn't have that that vision, you know, and and I didn't make the movie with them, you know. So I think it is about trying to be patient and, and you know, I probably could have made the movie a little bit sooner if I had made more compromises creatively. Um, but I was pretty clear on certain things, specifically authentic cast and um, making the film in a certain style and in actual real locations, you know, that, that fit the story and, um, you know, not shooting in New Mexico or something that just fit totally out of place, you know, just because it had a good incentive or something. And so it definitely probably took a little bit longer, but in the end, it made a really great film by kind of holding out a little bit longer, probably. So from your experience in 2003, when you were a teenager and you made a feature, do you think the concept, the idea was important at that time to those distributors versus now it's, it's just much different? It's a machine. Um, well, so I think that first feature I made when I was in high school it got picked up from a distributor because I think they could tell 
a bigger story by this 17 year old had made a feature film like that's kind of was the selling i was the star of that movie i guess you know um so i don't think it's changed a whole lot um obviously there's there's more and more opportunities now for distribution than ever and so um i still think there's lots of opportunities and there's lots of smart good distributors that want to make good things but um unfortunately there still are a lot of movies that are made more from the financial only sense and not just is this a really good movie that's gonna um people are gonna enjoy because i think also people they when sometimes when they analyze a movie only from the money side they forget that the creative is a money side too you know like if the movie's crap then it doesn't mean the movie's gonna be successful just because it fits everything else you know and so and if you make a really good film it'll still probably it could still be successful. So I think it still should all be, it should be all around the story and the script. Unfortunately, it isn't, but hopefully um, more films are successful of this kind of size that are like that, that hopefully that can, that can change some things. Okay, so you have a name attached, you have someone who has a fan base. Then how, how does the money then follow? Yeah, so I had written the script, I had made this proof of concept, I had gotten Lucy Hale attached to star in it. Um, and then it still took two years to go and make the movie after that. So, yeah, because we still had to find the money. Um, basically, we had her value now, which gave the movie a, a, an actual way to kind of have value to for people to see that it could make money once it got made. But we still had to get people to, to commit to a certain dollar amount. We had to then just find the actual people that wanted to invest in that. Um, our model was after... You know, so Lucy, she signed on. She actually kind of came on also as an executive producer to kind of say, hey, I'll help you try to go get this made too a little bit. And so she sent the script to a producer. He came on board to help me. He was excited about it. He took it to some more producers. <laughs> you know, that's kind of how it always works, right? It just kind of goes on to the next person. Um, they eventually were able to get us, uh, it's called an MG or minimum guarantee. And it's basically a distributor pre-buying the movie before you even made it just off the script and the cast. So they basically looked at it and said, okay, Lucy Hale, this script, we think it's this much money we can make off of it, so this is what we'll offer it to you. And so even then, they don't give you the money to go make it. You then have to still find someone else to usually finance that, that contract, basically. It's almost like collateral you use to kind of then go make it. So that's how we did it. That was our model. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's how we were able to get the movie made. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, it's it, it still took a long time. And, you know, this was also like, right, you know, we were supposed to go make the movie or hoping to go make the movie and then COVID happened. So that pushed us off again and had another delay. And so, you know, it's um, uh, it's just never, and even when you think it's all put together or something falls apart, you know, and so it's, it's a whole process. I was a producer on the movie, but my other three other producers were really the key people in terms of the financial side. So they were really the ones getting that money and putting that together and, and managing all that. So, you know, I can't speak to all of it in super detail, but it's definitely a complicated process that is, uh, you know, it's, it, you never know what's going to happen next, basically, with it. So the fact, too, that Lucy Hale was an executive producer and was sort of helping to shepherd the movie probably was incredibly helpful as well. For sure. I mean, mm -hmm. having her name attached as an actress is, is huge, but then having her as vouching for it as as a really strong project that she wants to put her weight behind was was super essential. I mean, just legitimize the project and um, open more doors. You know, I mean, it's funny though, even when you have someone famous attached, it can still be really hard. It's just so hard to get a movie made, you know, no matter who it is trying to, to make it. I think uh, they, they, they make it as difficult as possible, you know, and, uh, but... I think if you just keep going and never give up, it 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 will usually find a way. Were there any things where, let's say, you were all boarding a plane ready to film and something fell through? Um, luckily, we didn't have anything fall through too late in the game. I think the biggest thing was just we shot the film in Spain. Um, we ended up doing that because we we had to basically the time window we were going to originally make this was in the spring of 2020 which of course was when COVID was coming and shutting the world down. So then we had this window in the fall when we thought we could go make it somewhere because the world was starting to open up again, at least in Europe. But after we waited too long, Lucy and other people might not be available anymore. So we knew if we were going to make it this year, as in 2020, when we made it, um, we had to go then. And the only place we could really do that was 
was not in California where we were set because everything was still so much more closed down to get the permits at the state park and everything were already going to be complicated. But even during COVID, it was just almost impossible. And so I had been looking at other countries and places to film the movie before this even just to kind of exp to explore what opportunities there were. And Spain has this desert that looks almost identical to California desert, to the desert of Anza Brego where the movie is set. And that was not my first choice originally, and it's not what I ever thought was the right move to go all the way to Spain just to make the movie that's set here. But it ended up being probably the perfect thing because the desert, it was such a perfect match. And then it allowed us, our money actually went a lot further in Spain because one is there's a tax incentive for the whole country for filming. But then just the crew and other things, the, the money, I think it allowed us to get probably even more for our money. I mean, you obviously lose money too on exchanging to euros and flying people over there and all that stuff. But in the end of the day, we found a great group of people that wanted to help us make this movie and and we made a, a really great film there. And so um, it all worked out. But I think, yeah, the, to, your, to your question, it, it was the hardest thing was probably just getting the visas for people to get over there, allowing even the airlines didn't want us and to get on the plane, because at the time no one was traveling even, you know, Americans weren't allowed to travel. And so, you know, the first plane I tried to get on leaving LAX, they wouldn't even let us on the plane because they were worried we wouldn't be allowed into the country, you know, because it was just such a rare thing for people to be leaving the country. Um, so there was those kind of complications. But once we were there, you know, it was just the typical normal complications of just trying to figure it out. But um, luckily there weren't any sort of major drama or anything like that. <laughs> So you had your boarding pass and maybe a carry-on, and they said, sorry, sir, we can't have you. Yeah, no, we were trying to check in uh, for the plane um, to, to go to Spain to go film a movie, and we had a ticket and everything, but the actual, you know, agents checking our bags in basically said, like, you know, you're not, you, you, you don't have, you're missing some piece of paperwork or whatever. We didn't, we had it, but they were just so, had never experienced this yet that an American was leaving the country to go make a movie somewhere that that would be allowed by the Spanish government, you know? And so it was just, it was just so new to everyone, you know, no one, this was in September, August, September of 2020. It was just still so, so fresh, still in the middle of the pandemic, really.